Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, this time we've got a very simple project and you know I was debating whether to even make a video of it but I figured hey it's a small tool I need to make well another couple tools that uh, for another project that's coming up the road. So I figured I was doing a bit of metal cutting anyway and then I figured uh, you might find it interesting too. So hope you do. I have another simple little project. Actually it's a tool to make another tool to make another tool. Um, the usual chain of events like we have at home. Uh, but uh, for now, I'll just suffice to say this is what I need as the first step. This is the drive plate off of my lathe. Um, I need to turn a couple things between centers. And uh, to do that, you know, you need to use a drive, a drive dog. Problem is, the uh, drive dogs I have, turns out that, well, that's not really going to work for what I need. The ear there isn't even going to engage with the plate before I can get the stock held in place. Use a bigger one. Well, still same sort of issue, right? So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a simple drive dog. This piece of scrap here should work as far as the actual ring. One of the issues is I need to put this piece in. Uh, I mean, it's nice that it's already been center drilled. This piece here will fit in just lightly already. There's some threads in here that need to be cut out anyway. So I'm going to cut this out to make it a little bit bigger. We'll put a bolt on one side and a uh, leg in the other side to grab into the drive plate. So I got I got my ring. Just going to use some bolts I have. They got threads all the way along. Um, they're M10 by 1.5 bolts. And as far as the leg to come off of our uh, ring here, I have a uh, an old uh, spring U-bolt to. Uh, it was originally designed to bolt an axle to a, a differential. Um, these weren't used. These are actually part of a lift kit. And well, the shop I used to work at used to do a number of these, and sometimes the bolts didn't fit. These went to the scrap metal bin. So I have a few of these. Well, this just so happens to have a 90 degree. Well, just so happens to have a 90 degree on the end, and it fits just nicely into the slots. So we're gonna cut it off here in my very precise scientifically uh, placed paint marker and uh, then we'll just cut this uh, cut it off to length yeah oh dear uh, okay i'm gonna have to go deal with that and then we'll get up to we'll get to the building i don't know if you can hear my son uh, crying in the uh, monitor but i gotta go my little man was uh you know he's been in bed for about two and a half hours but uh yeah he squeaked rolled over Made a little bit of noise, and then eventually went back to sleep. So we're good. We can keep going. Um, what I did was, uh, since I came back, I wound up taking and just taxing the piece off. It's going to be easiest to do it that way. So for offset here, as we move towards center, yeah, this will be about the biggest piece we're going to get. Yeah, let's go about there. And it's going to come into the... Um, into the body, I'm gonna, drill it. I'm gonna drill and weld it. Yeah. Yeah, let's call it there. This one I can do on the bandsaw eventually. But we're gonna do there and there. Yeah, that should work. We'll need that measurement for later. The length of the uh, ring is going to be arbitrary so I'm figuring probably seven eighths one inch somewhere around there again that part's not super critical uh, per, you know probably shoot for about seven eighths um, I'm going to clean up this face here we're going to bore the center out here just to get rid of those uh, munged up threads uh, again this came out of a scrap metal bin as well so I don't know what it is I think it's a mild steel but I couldn't tell you um, but yeah, we'll just uh, we'll clean up the outside, clean up the face, bore it out, and then, uh, well, cut it off. Yeah, good enough.
That'll work. I figure I'll make it seven eighths of an inch wide. So with our proper tool post in there, just get it touching, close enough. We'll make this nine hundred thousandths. That gives us a bit to make a cleanup pass. Face the back side. Here we go. There's nine hundred thousandths. And hopefully you can get a reasonable shot in there. Okay, hopefully this should be a little more rigid than my last setup. I've also moved the compound to 90 degrees. Hopefully that'll help with the rigidity. How it's supposed to happen. Yeah, I knew better the other day. I should have followed my gut. I've measured the part. It's well, 894 thousandths wide. I have to take 19 thousandths off of it. Good enough. Just needs a little bit of a chamfer there in order to uh, not get cut. Well, today's sketchy setup is brought to you by the fact that uh, I need to turn this diameter here down to, well, 530 thousandths, which is the same diameter as my 17 30 seconds drill. This is what I'll use to drill the hole in the side of the ring, and so this needs to fit in. It's 15 millimeters, so approximately 587. So we need to take what? Yeah, I guess about 60 thousandths off. I just have to keep my fingers clear. Yeah, okay, 529, close enough. I'm not gonna bother parting it, I'm just gonna use a hacksaw. Okay, uh, what I did off camera was I've already established uh, center and my Y axis and my X axis on the part. Spot this one. And we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pilot drill all the way through. And we're gonna do everything with it in this setup, both the stuff on the bottom with the threads and the stuff on the top with the uh, larger hole. This machining really nicely. It must be mild steel of some type. Again, it's another mystery metal. Alrighty, take our tap. Uh, Ooh, not quite. Yeah, tap's not quite going to reach that way. Maybe you, I can't really start it in the chuck. Although, yes I can. Give me a minute. Um, it just turns out that I happen to have a 12 point quarter inch drive 11 30 second socket, which has a reasonable grip on the square end of my tap. I have it in a quarter inch mail to a quarter inch hex adapter that you'd normally use for something like a screw gun. And just add a little bit of the tapping fluid. Bring our hex down. There we are. There. 
There we go, we're through. Oops. We're through. So yeah, this is all I used was a quarter inch adapter. And that is ready to come out. A little bit of deburring here and there, but there we go. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make sure that that's not poking through. We'll use this block here that's pretty square. I mean, square enough for our purposes. Butt it up against the piece of work here. Make sure we're not through in the back. And that's where I'm going to tack it. There, that'll hold it in place. It'll hold it in place long enough to run a weld bead anyway. Yeah. Try to get you an angle so you can see what's going on. Ah, yeah. Give me a minute, I gotta resharpen the tungsten. It took a swim on that last pass. Okay, so let's try this again. Yeah, I'm kind of shaky, so I went up dunking the tungsten on that last pass, and it really didn't like, th like that. Oh yeah, that's better. better. Yep, that'll hold. It's got a cool first. Our uh, ring fits around our piece and it'll work for both this part and another part I have to turn between centers. And yes, I realize I have a live center in at the moment. If I'm trying to do something accurate, I'll use a dead center and just try to figure out where I can find some form of suitable lube around here that I can either concoct or is, you know, commercially available in smaller quantities. Here we go. Yep, this is where I'm very thankful for those new feet. I can feel some vibration. I don't know if you can see the lathe shaking. I can feel some through the floor, but before, with this amount of uh, imbalance, this whole machine would be shaking like crazy. Yeah, I know that uh, making a lathe dog is really not rocket science, and it's just sort of a little quickie, but uh, again, just one more little tool I need in the series of things I need to build for my own home shop. So yeah, very simple project. Um, it's... Uh, just one of those things I needed, and I figured you might want to come along for the ride. So for what it's worth, uh, for all of you who have been along for the ride so far, and those of you who are joining on, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and uh, see you next time.